if this is my color. <laughs> I think maybe I'm a little bit too pale for it. Well, anyways, good morning everyone and welcome back. I have a specific thing that I've been wanting to talk about a little bit more in depth for a long time and people have been requesting, well, you guys have been requesting me to talk a little bit more deeply about some things that maybe are not the most ideal about Korea and I think the most common thing that people think of when they think of that and think of Korea is their beauty standards. So this week I wanted to kind of like tap in with you once in a while, talk about beauty standards here in Korea and how it's affected me actually in two days officially from right now. So that's already passed when you're watching this. It's actually my four year anniversary in Korea. So I've kind of like grasped the whole culture around beauty very well by now, I would say, and been a little, um, both a viewer and a victim to it as well. Um, and I'm gonna share some stories about that. So also throughout this week, I thought it would just fit very nicely that I'm putting all of my beauty stuff beauty related stuff in it. So that's what we're also gonna do this week. Um, today, actually in an hour, I have a hair appointment because I need a haircut. I don't need it, I want a haircut. <laughs> I'll see you when we are heading to Hannam. One by one, I've been losing touch. Long legs bend at the knee. How your eyes betray what you think of me. They're telling me that I should leave. My God. Wow, guys, what a day. I've always said the best time to visit Seoul in is September, and I'm not wrong. This is beautiful weather. Ah, so happy. My God, <laughs> I can already see like a bit more volume. Yeah, more volume and more texture. Oh my god, it's crazy. <laughs> you have you? magic hands. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I'm out of the hairdressers and as you can see they cut out so much. I mean I asked for it, it was not like it was a surprise for me. Uh, I think most people are aware that beauty standards is exceptionally important or emphasized here in Korea. And a lot of people, you know, like to say that Korea has super high beauty standards and super like aggressive beauty standards. But my kind of theory is that I don't think they're much different from any other where else. I just think that the difference is here in Korea, you talk more openly about it. It's not very unlikely that someone will, you know, come up to you and say, hey, like, you look super tired today. What's going on? Like, you have bags under your eyes. Or, hey, you've gained some weight. Or, like, hey, like, have you ever thought about getting a double eyelid surgery? Like, it's just super normal conversations to bring up to like even like strangers <laughs> and so that's why I think especially as a foreigner coming here for the first time it can be overwhelming and it can feel like it's very extreme I think it's fun to like decipher this concept of beauty standards here in Korea a little bit more throughout this week because um, no matter what the balance to other countries is Korea's beauty standards are very extreme in a sense and um, yeah I would love to talk about that and how it's like affected everything but first 
I am heading over to Stephanie's house. She said she has some surprise for me, like she wanna take me on something, a trip, I don't know. She wanna take me somewhere that she doesn't wanna tell me, so that's what we're gonna do. Let's head to Stephanie. <laughs> two-part thing the first thing is something I just have to do <laughs> and I'm like I'll just drag you along with me that's what I'm here for <laughs> and the second part will be I think more fun for you okay we'll see okay. it's gonna take like 25 minutes okay that's the deal you go like outside of Seoul <laughs> I told you I'm kidnapping you I'm, I'm like being perfect. kidnapped Cecil is free she's <laughs> coming with me make this uh, task a little bit more fun Taking me to Yangje Gut. <laughs> this, I think, this is your favorite place on earth. It it's is. a flower market. I, I need a new pot and dirt. So yeah, and you've talked me into also needing five more plants. So I'm like, clearly, that's the plan. <laughs> Adam Sony. That one is not that bad. That's so cute though. I want one of these in my house. These are so pretty. Oh. Is it kind of weird if I just want to buy like one of these like old window? Is it window shields? And just like put it in my house up against the wall. That would be so pretty. I can't wait to move and like redecorate everything. <laughs> you live for the chase, but you act like you don't. So don't be proud. Don't be proud. You got lost. I um, I'm actually about to head out. I wanted to sit and do some work in a cafe. I think for my last video I really kind of like recognized that I really do need to get out of the house more. So I wanted to pack a bag while having a little chat because we are talking about beauty standards. So I wanted to continue the talk a little bit and um, you know share another theory that I have. Korea and other Asian countries to, you know, just in general, have a higher tendency to, you know, have social conformity. Like you are listening more to the government, being less critical to the government, which is why we have a lot of young people who are angry about the government, but not really changing their votes because it's not really something that is being taught here that you can you know, stand out and live out your uniqueness or your individuality. It's very much like a society that is built up around like 
they're valuing blending in and trying to stand out is not really looked very well upon, which is also why you can see like all of these beauty standards and trends and all of that, which most people will try to follow. Now, I would say in the past, I mean, ever since I came here, like in the past four or five years, it has changed a lot and we have a lot more people, you know, evalu like valuing their own style and, you know, branching out to other cultures and grasping some trends and, you know, I would say beauty inspiration from there. Like, for example, we have definitely seen the, you know, crave of tan skin come back to Korea. People are starting to really like seek out their individuality which is why it's so interesting to be here in korea because you know right now in this very moment we have the young people trying to break free but not really being aware of them trying to break free and you know finding their own voice both when it comes to beauty but also you know anything else like political or personal or you know family related to be honest but I still like you know way far the majority of people would try to rather blend in rather than stand out which is why there is such high pressure for people to blend in and to really like live up to these very set standards so that's why it might seem a little bit extreme for people coming here first and we have to understand this is a country with people who has like you know been through a lot like to hell and back throughout history so it's very natural that this is how it looks right now, but it's so nice to see like some individuality to be pushed here. Okay, let's head down to the cafe and get some tea. That cafe down there, um, close to my house, they have the best flower tea. So I really wanna go and have a cup of that. They were literally playing All I Want for Christmas is You a minute ago. That's hilarious. <laughs> September. <laughs> I went to do some grocery shopping and um, I really wanted to try to kind of get better at cooking Korean food. I've even been like trying to look for some cooking classes online. Um, but my first like real attempt on making something like that we're gonna enjoy together right now is gonna be sujebi. So while I'm cutting up some vegetables, um, I wanted to tell you about a story about my first year in Korea where I was modeling because that's kind of where the Korean beauty standards really was hitting me flat face and where I did not have the best time in my life to be honest. <laughs> I think like a lot of them, most of them were very fun. It's so fun working in the creative field with creative people here because they're just like on another league. Like it's so much fun but I also had like some not as fun experiences and most of them had to do with my size, to be honest. Um, and this is what's interesting though. At that point, at the height that I was at, I probably was lighter than I should have been. Maybe like a normal weight, but it wasn't natural for my body type. What I am right now is pretty natural for my body type, but I was significantly smaller when I first came because I had a lot of like issues when I was in Denmark relating food and such that I've talked about before and I always write like my size and my measurements and like something very specific in my portfolio so the clients would not mistake it um, but spoiler alert no one really believed that that was my size I think 
So I, you know, showed up in a lot of these places and a lot of the times this clothing just did not fit me. Obviously it's made to fit Korean people, which is fine. I mean, I'm a 177 girl who is uh, not exactly like petitely built. So that's totally fine. But the thing is like these brands, they just did not look at my portfolio properly enough. And then, you know, because of the openness of Korean culture, they like pointed that out very often for me. There is one specific time that I remember very clearly, which was um, for this fashion brand, I guess it was. And that disclaimer, that was the last time I did fashion for a reason. And here it comes. Like, again, they have all of my measurements. None of the clothes fit me. And they made sure that I was aware that it didn't fit. They were not happy, not at all. And when it came time for like lunch break, they um, would like ring the lunch bell and they would be like, okay, let's go to lunch. And then this director, I think it was maybe someone who owns the fashion brand or something was like looking at me and said, Cecil, but you're not coming to lunch, right? You must be on a diet. And it was just very said in the way that it was not really, you must be on a diet. It was more like, you probably should go on a diet kind of way. And that really made me pissed off. I was angry for the rest of the shoot. Um, and then when I came home, I got really sad because obviously it's not very nice to be told, especially after you've like just recovered from some like very hard period of your life when it comes to your weight. And yeah, as I said, after that one time, I never went back to doing fashion shoots again. After that, I went straight and just only did beauty. And to be honest, that was a lot more fun. Probably it was a lot more fun as well because I didn't get all of those nasty comments. Like I did most of the fashion shoots. In beauty, it was like all compliments, which I mean, I do recognize that I'm fitting at least my face quite well into the Korean beauty standards, which is what allowed me to actually be able to earn money for a year doing modeling. And I'm really thankful about that. Like I'm not a model, you know? <laughs> so I'm very thankful for that time and I'm very thankful for the, like thankful for my face to fit into that. I don't know what to say this. I just wanted to express like that. I'm not at all complaining that they were nagging my, no, that's not true. I am complaining. Like, I don't think that should be normalized anywhere to, talk that way to people about their body. You never know what people are going through, you know? It's not really because I just want to make this video negative because it's really not. Like there's so many beautiful things about Korea. Um, I just don't think the beauty standards and the openness on commenting on people's appearance and weights is a positive thing. Um, even though it's cultural, I know that it's controversial saying that I am not opening and welcoming to a certain part of the culture, but I'm honestly not because there is bad and good things about each culture. And this is unfortunately a really bad thing about Korean culture. Um, so that's just my opinion. I think a lot of people have different experiences, so don't take my experience for the fact, but um, it's a good idea of <laughs> what it is. Anyways, I've cut up most of the things here. Now I wanted to go ahead and start boiling the veggies. Mm. 
Really? Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> I'm actually proud of myself. Mm. I didn't expect it to yeah, be good, to really be good. honest. I expected me to kind of fail. <laughs> <laughs> proud of you. Mm. Okay, let's watch our documentary. Yeah, thanks, baby. Mm. Mm. Oh, mm. Consider this as um, an invitation to you to take a photo of it and send it to your mom and tell her how good I am. Can I also play right into the super? I wanted to energize a lot of people and hopefully inspire a lot of people as to. Hi, and good morning, everyone. I. I'm not gonna lie, I actually am feeling quite insecure these days because of this haircut. There is definitely something wrong going on on this side of the hair. I think like the layers and such was done in a bad way so that it never really goes up in a ponytail and it also looks kind of weird down. I don't know if you know, but my hair and you know, this part of my myself has always been one of my biggest insecurities. It's um, when I was younger, I was teased by having a big forehead a lot and um, it kind of just always has been lingering in my mind and something I've been insecure about. I have extremely thin hair and it's not because my hair is thinning or falling out, it's literally just my genes. My mom and my dad has thin hair as well. And you know, my, my hairline as well is very thin. So the baby hairs that people usually have, mines are so thin and pretty much like, you can't see them, like they're not visible because they're so thin. And this has just come, you know, a lot more into my attention after moving to Korea as well. I was insecure about it before that, like this is not Korea's fault, but because of that, like, you know, openness to commenting on things here. And also how like both friends and also, you know, on jobs, they will Photoshop you without asking because it's just a norm when you're taking photos or something. And people would always Photoshop my forehead and my hair. And I've just become so insecure about that because it felt like a big slap to the face every time I saw that. And I even myself Photoshop my forehead a little bit, like I move my hairline down just a bit and I'm ashamed of it, I really am, but I am insecure and I am trying to fix that. I mean, there's a lot of things that I would have Photoshopped back in the day that I don't Photoshop anymore. What happened to the sun? Because of that, I have decided to bend back over and do something about it. I've booked a tattoo appointment <laughs> to get my hairline tattooed. And it's pretty much just to fill in these gaps here where I do have baby hair, but where like it's just not thick and it's not colored enough. So we're going to Hongdae today to do that. And um, I'm just gonna head out and maybe find a cafe on the way. I really want some coffee and I really need to sit and do some studying on my computer. So that's the plan. Let's head to Mangwon, I think. I'll see you there. interesting being back here if you've been together with me on my channel for longer then you would maybe remember that i used to live in mangwondong where we are right now it was my first apartment in korea i have not very good memories in there which is why i rarely come back to this area but i thought it's time to get over that and i don't know this area grew so much it's still its charming little hub of markets but so many cool cafes. I give it all to you. I give it all to you. I give it all to you. I give it all to you.
So I'm about to head out to the bus, the, the village bus to take it to the area where I'm gonna get my little hairline tattooed. I never thought I could do anything about it. it. Like, I never thought I could do anything about anything, to be honest, when I lived back in Denmark. But here in Korea, like, there's posters and ads in the subway and in the TV and on YouTube about plastic surgery and you can pretty much see it everywhere so it's just a lot more accessible here than anywhere else in the world you've probably heard that korea is i think apart from brazil one of the places where people get the most and most frequent most people have had it done like something done so it's just doesn't seem as far away from reality here as it did other places and basically like I'm someone who's extremely afraid of anything surgical related like and even getting a vaccine is super scary to me and I've even like at some weak point like contemplated getting even the forehead reduction surgery and that's really crazy I would not do it but it's a, like a very intensive surgery right so a semi-permanent tattoo sounds a little bit better for me so that's what I'm gonna do yeah okay let's head over and uh, see how it's gonna go find the mall bus I look absolutely ridiculous right now, but we're applying some some like a numbing cream it's called. I didn't know you needed that to be honest. I thought I came in here with like tattoos all up my arms and I was like, yeah, I don't need that. It's gonna be fine. But she said it actually is gonna hurt a bit. It's a little bit different than a tattoo. Also, cause it's like flat on your scalp. I guess it both vibrates and the sound and like the feeling in general, like it would be nice with some cream on. So that's what we did. <laughs> <笑>そのロハンドよ。ね。うん。うん、そのロハンドよ。あ、新鮮。うん、韓国本でちょっと普通の人も多いかもしれない。うん。うん、うん。うん、うん。うん、うん。うん、うん。うん、うん。うん、
with the, what's it called, treatment. That was nothing like I expected it to be. It was, you know, at once I expected it to be the tattoo gun, which is why I wasn't scared. But then I looked at it and it looked like a scalpel. Like it looked like, what's that called? Like a surgery knife, like surgical knife or something. It's not, it was like a collection of a million needles, but it literally felt like a knife. It felt like she was slicing my skin, but it was fine. Like I'm very grateful that we had the numbing cream on. Goodness, but it looks so natural. Like I'm gonna be able to put my hair away and not constantly like fix it and pull it down in front of my face. I am, I'm just so excited about that. And I'm so excited about not, you know, like taking a photo and being like, whoa, that was wind blowing my hair up in that photo, huh? I don't know, I'm so happy, but this is how it looks. It still like tightens and hurt a little bit, but like look how natural that is. It literally looks like my hair. Wow. I'm gonna check in with you again when I'm home and when it's not that red, but I just wanna say that I fully enjoyed this experience. I'm gonna leave the information to this place down in the description box and also on the screen somewhere. I super recommend it. Oh my God. Oh, I'm so glad that she let me film as well. So yeah, I'm a happy person now. Okay, let's go home. <laughs>